On Thursday, Alan Shaw, CEO of Embattled Rail Company, Norfolk Southern, went before Congress, and, uh, well, it, it didn't exactly go well for him. Uh, there was a lot of, uh, there's a lot of lies, uh, a lot of dodging, uh, and we'll get to that. So now it started out with remarks prepared for the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works with Shaw apologizing. Uh, that apology, of course, uh, will end up being quite empty, as you'll see. He said, I'm deeply sorry for the impact this derailment has had on the people of East Palestine and surrounding communities, and I am determined to make it right. Well, how are you determined to make it right when you don't plan on doing anything? <laughs> as Common Dreams and More Perfect Union noted, Shaw refused to commit to providing workers with paid sick leave, all workers, um, ending the stock buyback program until safety measures are put into place and ending the precision scheduled railroading, which has been blamed for many of the issues, short staffing, leading to the 1,500 plus derailments seen each year in the country. Now, an example of him, uh, of Shaw, you know, dodging questions uh, is when uh, Senator Bernie Sanders grilled him about paid leave. Will you make that commitment right now? to guarantee paid sick days to all of your workers. That's not a radical demand, it really is not. Will you make that commitment, sir? Senator, I share your focus on our employees. I will commit to continuing to discuss with them important quality of life issues with our local craft colleagues. With all due respect, you sound like a politician here, Mr. Shaw. It's not wrong. Oh, we'll be continuing to discuss uh, discuss these nuts, okay? No, this guy's obviously not going to do a goddamn thing. He has no interest in ensuring paid leave to all of his employees. No, he's going to ensure that he makes as much money as possible. Safety be damned. Look, so now um, Sanders noted that Oh, well, you know, uh, while you had uh, you know, allowed some uh, paid leave for about 3,000 employees, and that's fine, that's good, uh, everyone deserves paid leave, and he had said that. Uh, and by the way, when you look at, I don't know, 3,000 out of 15,000 employees getting paid leave, that's only about a fifth of your workforce. Hey, look, again, good for them, right? Everybody deserves paid leave. They deserve paid leave. Uh, I'm not. I'm not knocking that part at all. That's that's good. Uh, but as Sanders noted, everyone deserves paid leave, and it's not like they can't afford to do so. Norfolk Southern recently uh, did around ten billion dollars worth of stock buybacks in order to reward investors instead of reinvesting in their workforce in the form of higher wages, more employees, and improved safety measures or I should say better benefits, they did They did raise uh, wages. But again, they have a, such a small workforce that I don't think it makes that much of a difference when these people still uh, aren't able to get any time off at all when they're sick. Uh, now, going to the stock buybacks here, we're going to go to another senator, Senator Jeff Merkley, who asked, hey, uh, okay, look, are you going to stop the stock buybacks at least for now? until you've made sure the rails are a bit safer. Well, here was the answer. Will you pledge today that you will do no more stock buybacks until a raft of safety measures have been completed to reduce the risk of derailments and crashes in the future? Senator, I will commit to invest in, continuing to invest in safety. We invest over a billion dollars a year you, you noted that you have a list of safety things you'd like to implement. Will you commit no more stock buybacks until those safety improvements are completed? Senator, I will commit to continuing to invest in safety. I, I will commit to investing in uh, continuing to invest in safety. Now, you said, oh, yeah, a billion in safety, right? Versus $10 billion in stock buy, uh, buybacks over the last few years? So wait, uh, now uh, on the uh, billion dollars of in safety investment, right? Uh, well, was it? Is there a, a time frame on that? Did he give a time frame when that money was spent and on what? No, he didn't give any details. 
Nope. We do have another time frame on some of these stock buybacks. Uh, according to More Perfect Union, payouts to Norfolk Southern shareholders surged by more than 4,500% over the past 20 years. From the $101 million in stock repurchases back then, and dividend bumps in 2002 to $4.7 billion in 2022. So now, again, if they had spent a billion dollars over the last 20 years while giving, again, billions of dollars in stock buybacks and dividends to shareholders, that doesn't really amount to much, does it? It's probably... In my guess uh, as to why they didn't really get into that detail. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, I have one uh, more video here. Uh, and this is, uh, again, we've seen Shaw kind of like uh, dancing around, you know, the answers and just giving some non-answers. Now we're just going to have Shaw just straight up lying uh, about their record on rail safety. And you've seen over time the number of derailments, hazardous material releases, and personal injuries has declined. There's always more that we will do, and I am committed to having the best safety culture in the industry. You're coming here with three derailments within three months, and the average in the industry is one per month for the entire industry. Uh, so congratulations on maybe some good luck over a few years. But at this moment, uh, your team is is the team that has the most derailments in the last three months. Facts. Berkeley, not buying it. Great. Uh, now, <laughs> I, I, no, I love it, though. Straight up. Not, oh, no, we've, we've, we've never been safer. What are you talking about? We're very, very, very safe. No, really, is, is that the case? No. Let, let's look uh, at the amount of derailments from this company alone compared to the rest of the industry. Oops. Weird. They seem to have a lot more than the entire industry. Straight up lying. Uh, look, they're the worst out of everyone. And by the way, you saw, also saw every other company also having a lot more derailments. Uh, now, ironically, a Norfolk Southern train had derailed in Calhoun County, Alabama, three hours prior to that hearing. Our company, we're so safe, though. We're so safe. We, we're doing way better than ever before. I don't understand what you're talking about. No, see, here's the thing. And when you look at the profits, which have gone up, obviously, because shares have gone up, stock buybacks have gone up, you have to have profits to do your stock buybacks, right? Well, um, in that time where the profits and the stock buybacks have gone up, and you've got kind of compensation, dividends have all gone up, derailments have also gone up. Now, look, there are cases where causation does not equal correlation. Okay? In this case... No, there is definite correlation here. The reason that this company became so profitable is because they made their trains less safe because it was cheaper. They cut their workforce. Less people manning these trains. Again, that reduced the safety. According to the Railroad Workers Union, uh, I'm sorry, Railroad Workers United and others, the industry-led deregulation, which again um, culminated in the removal of the ECS break rule during the Trump administration, the lobbyists just poured cash all over politicians, maybe in a literal sense. I mean, I could imagine a gigantic swimming pool where they're just jumping barrels of money uh, all over these politicians. They're swimming in it like Scrooge freaking McDuck. Um, it, it, whether that happened or not, the whole point is they've been drawing money by lobbyists and they did whatever the lobbyists told them to do, which is deregulate the industry and to make sure these companies did not have to upgrade their civil war era braking systems. 
and didn't have to have safety inspections as many. Didn't have to have special rules for trains carrying toxic chemicals like what happened in East Palestine and allowed them to use policies like precision scheduled railroading, which has made the rail system more dangerous. You have less workers, longer trains. And look, uh, Norfolk Southern slashed their workforce by nearly 40% in a six year period. That's why they can't do paid leave. No, they're short staffed and they're so short staffed that you know, they're not, that if anybody were to use their time off when they get sick, because that's what humans do. Humans get sick and they need some time off to recover. There wouldn't be anyone there if people did that, actually took advantage of that time um, to run the trains. This is not an issue where, oh, nobody, nobody wants to work. No, it's it was because n these train companies didn't want to hire more people. Because if they hire more staff, to run their increasingly longer trains, they make less money. Now, only recently, because the focus has been on Norfolk Southern, were they actually forced to hire a few more people, doing the bare, bare minimum, and of course, giving 3,000 of their uh, workers paid leave, Um, they were only, they were only forced to do that because of the bad PR. But as long as we have an industry that still has things like precision scheduled railroading, which Wall Street loves, well, uh, that's still going to put towns all over the country in danger of having to deal with the derailment involving these toxic chemicals and other things. And that's why Shaw refused when asked. Uh, this is when uh, Bernie Sanders asked him, will you make a commitment right now to the American people that you will lead the industry in ending this disastrous precision scheduled railroading? And again, refuse to answer. Look, I think it should be pretty obvious to anyone right now that this is, this is why we need a government that puts down rules and regulations. It turns out regulations, not some evil thing to crush business. It's to set rules that are basically basic safety standards. That's it. That's it. Because when it's a choice between the safety and the profits, the companies will always choose the profit. Because somehow, somehow, a derailed train doesn't lose them a lot of money. Somehow. In fact, they, they lose um, less money than it would take to properly staff the trains, pay enough people to run them so that they don't derail. That is incredibly, uh, an example of incredibly messed up incentives. That's our incentive structure in this country. Short-term profit over everything else. So this is why we need a government that is willing to actually regulate business. That's what we want. I again, nobody's asking for over-regulation or ridiculous, you know, levels of regulation. That really will harm business. No, this, this doesn't harm business at all. This actually helps them because there's less train derailments. But again, these uh, lobbyists, CEOs, executives, all they care about is short-term gains, greed. Uh, and so that's why they'll never regulate themselves. No, we have to we have to have a government that, that does regulate. And in order to get a government that does regulate, we have to get the money out of politics so that these lobbyists can't go in and pay our politicians to strip away the rules.